Hello everyone. My name is Vitalik Ablaev. I'm a sales engineer at Plexim. Welcome to the Plex Model of the Month video series. In this month's video, I will discuss the buck converter with constant on-time controller using a state machine model found in the Plex demo model library. Our next model of the month video could feature your model. If you have a Plex model you're willing to share, send it to info at plexm.com with a description of the power stage and the controller. If your model gets picked, we will make a video of it and post it to our LinkedIn and YouTube pages while publicly crediting your work. To view pre-built models in Plex, go to Window Demo Models. On the left, the demo models are categorized by Power Electronics Area. You could choose models based on our physical domains or the Plex version they were released in, as well as search for them. Each model has a description along with a few references. To open a model, click on the link at the top right corner. These two models have identical constant on-time controllers, which were implemented in different ways, one using the Plex control library blocks and another using the Plex state machine block. The model I will be showing you today includes both of these controller implementations. This model demonstrates regulating the output voltage of a buck converter using a constant on-time controller. As the name suggests, this algorithm keeps the on-time duration constant while the off-time is varied and has a minimum value. This particular controller watches the inductor current and, as soon as it drops below the reference value, a pulse is sent to switch the MOSFET on for a fixed duration of time. The benefits of the constant on-time controller approach are fast response times, circuit stability, use a few extra components, and high efficiency. The outer voltage loop is implemented using a simple PI controller. This computes a current reference from the difference between the load and reference voltages. This current reference is then compared to the actual inductor current to generate the current error, which is sent to the inner loop, which uses the constant on-time control scheme. What happens in both constant on-time control implementations is, when the actual inductor current falls below the reference current, the MOSFET is switched on for a fixed duration. After that, the MOSFET switches back off and remains in the off state until it receives another switch on pulse from the controller. There is a minimum off time parameter specified to prevent the inductor from saturating with multiple pulses in a row during a rapid change of load. Looking under the mask of the current compensator subsystem lets me view the two implementations of the same controller, which were manually combined here. The first implementation uses Plex control library blocks. The on time and the minimum off time are specified using the pulse delay and monoflop blocks respectively. I will run the simulation and save the trace to be able to compare it to the other controller implementation later. I will also switch to the Plex state machine configuration within this configurable subsystem. The second implementation uses a state machine block. With this block, Plex lets you graphically create and edit state machines using common concepts such as boxes for states and curved arrows for transitions and simulate them together within the surrounding system. The output of a state machine depends on the entire history of its inputs which makes it a great alternative to C scripts, DLL blocks and other control library blocks found in Plex. This model is a great example of how a state machine block makes the controller more visual and easy to implement. This state machine has the current error as its input and the MOSFET switching signal as its output. The on and off states are used to switch the MOSFET on and off, and the ready for on state is a waiting state. The constant on time and minimum off times are configured as internal constants T on and T off min. 
Checking the animation checkbox will let me use the spacebar key to cycle through the simulation with the current states and transitions being highlighted. As you will see, this makes it easier for me to show the algorithm implementation in more detail. We start the simulation with the initial transition pointing to a junction component on the top. Since the current reference value is larger than the inductor current, the current error is larger than zero and the state on is entered. The enter action of the on state sets the output signal S to one, thus turning on the MOSFET. Once I press space again, exactly T on seconds after the entry of the on state, the state machine is executed again and the event after T on becomes active. This causes the state machine to transition to state off and the output signal S is set to zero. Exactly T off min seconds after this event, the state machine is executed again and the timer event after T off min becomes active. The transition for this timer event is branched with a junction. Because the current error is already greater than zero at this instant, the state machine transitions directly to state on again. But as you will see, as I cycle through the simulation, eventually the state machine will take a different execution route and transition to the waiting state ready for on, in which it will remain until the current error becomes greater than zero again. Let me stop this simulation, uncheck the animation check mark, run the full simulation and save the trace. As you will see, simulating both of these controller implementations produces identical results, and I will spread the signals and toggle one of the save traces to illustrate this better. If we zoom into the beginning when the inductor current is ramping up, notice how the minimum off time value prevents the inductor from saturating from too many pulses. If I then zoom into the four millisecond time mark and enable the delta function between the cursors, notice how the controller takes only about one, one and a half milliseconds to reach a steady state after a load step. Additionally, zooming in more clearly shows how the inductor current starts to grow each time a pulse is sent to switch on the MOSFET at the current's lowest point. I hope you enjoyed this video on the constant on-time controller shown in two of our demo models. Please submit your Plex models to info at plexum.com for a chance to have your model displayed. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexum.com. Thanks for watching.